Hello everyone and welcome to an as yet unnamed YouTube video that I've yet to decide what it's going to be. I'm here at the eastern end of what will eventually become Curtis Street Station, uh, HS2's Birmingham uh, Terminus. <laughs> I forgot the name there. Uh, and I'm going to walk from one end to the other to give you an idea of how huge it is. So I'm going to start walking now. Um, here is the sign entrance where I was earlier. There's some uh, surveyors doing their thing. I'm going to start walking. So, what have I been up to today? Well, this video is going to be a bit random because what I'm planning to do is walk all the way from one end to the other and interject it, slice in uh, the sort of things that I, the videos, bits and pieces that I've been doing, uh, so that you can get an idea of some of the things uh, I've had the pleasure of doing today with a few other railway people, keen railway people, historians, and uh, and some non-railway people who are just interested in the impact the High Speed Two will have on Birmingham and the wider area. Um, so. People often don't realise quite the scale of, of the new High Speed 2 stations. The platforms, well the trains, and therefore the platforms that they'll fit within, are 400 metres long. That's huge. Um, and the first phase of the railway will open between uh, London and Birmingham, uh, and probably they'll knock it up to Crewe as well as part of Phase 1A. Um, on a route not that dissimilar to the original that Stevenson developed uh, back in the 18... 30s. And I had the pleasure of taking that journey this morning, in fact, from London up to Birmingham. And by the power of magic and technology, I'm going to play that now. Morning, everyone. Um, I'm, uh, no, where am I? I'm on a Thameslink train. Uh, and it's very early in the morning, but I'm doing something very exciting. We're off to, uh, we're off to Birmingham to uh, to see, well, what are we off to see? We have to wait and see. I happen to be joined by a rather lovely railway man. He's, he's also so quite tired. Good. It's so early. Ah, oh dear. Sorry, Tim. Anyway, here we are whizzing up the West Coast Main Line. Um, I think we're next to the, uh, the M1 as well. Uh, going at full tilt. Uh, literally, tilting. Anyway, um, it's probably worth mentioning what HS2 actually is. So it's a high-speed line uh, that is going to be built connecting London and Birmingham, then onwards to Manchester and then to Leeds. Uh, essentially, the, the main benefit of this line uh, isn't actually on HS2 at all. It's, it's about freeing up capacity in the existing railway network. So by getting those fast trains that um, force everything else to get out of the way, um, putting them on their own lines, you allow all the trains on the existing network to run much more closely together. Uh, here we are running into Birmingham, and uh, there's Curzon Street Junction, and uh, there's what we're going to be seeing. It's the Roundhouse. Amazing. Uh, and this is the whole site. It gives you an idea of the scale, um, which is uh, what I've been meandering along next to. In fact, you can see where I walked in the background. Um, that's nice, isn't it? Oh, there's the principal building. The site is absolutely huge. Really massive. Um, I'm afraid that pub's going. Sorry. Anyway, right. Uh, back to me meandering aimlessly, I think, in five seconds. Right, I'm still walking. And uh, actually, if you look behind me here, there, if I sidestep this way like a crab, behind me you can see some of the work they're doing, the scale of the work that's going on at this massive new station project. There's still proprietary works. They haven't started on the full, full scale civil engineering yet. Uh, everyone's really lucky. So you get this, uh, everyone who travels into Birmingham New Street, along the railway line that go into, the rail lines that go into and out of Birmingham New Street east, on the east side, uh, will get the benefit of, let's swap arms, We'll get the benefit of seeing the progress of Curzon Street stations. It grows as the as the foundations grow up out of the ground and as the railway alignment starts to appear. Um, which is really cool, actually. Quite envious of all those commuters getting to follow the civil engineering so closely. Uh, notice we're still walking, by the way. It's a very long walk. Uh, so, but anyway, so as part of the before the, all that digging happens, uh, the proprietary works have been uh, include archaeology, and part of the archaeology has well, the archaeology team have uncovered the oldest railway roundhouse that's a, basically a shed that they store uh, locomotives in around a turntable the oldest one in the world today we've all learned a valuable lesson in using a wind muffler and a microphone when recording audio outside and um, basically I'm just waffling on about the roundhouse being pretty well preserved and I think I'm about to point us to a video uh, that I filmed beforehand of it in fact lots of videos Yep, so we just uh, just changing in oranges, uh, meandering along in variously appropriate HS2 branded oranges. Um, 
and there's the site. I mean, just the scale. This this footage, this aerial footage, actually was taken before they uncovered the roundhouse. Um, but just the scale of the excavation is incredible. Those columns there, that that sort of uh, square column, you'll see another one in a minute, um, is actually something that was this a foundation of a previous building of the building that was built on top of it. Unfortunately, just look at the condition of the. Other than that, the condition is incredible. It is very exciting, Tim. Um, yeah, I mean, just just the scale. I just have to reiterate, the scale of this archaeological dig is phenomenal. Absolutely incredible. You can just see how much is going on. Hello, everyone. I'm here uh, sta standing in the remains of, absolutely spectacular remains of, uh, the world's oldest railway roundhouse, which is where they, they stored locomotives. Um, the locomotive, locomotive was very small back in back in the 1830s and 40s, so they could fit two in each road. Uh, there were 16, so they could fit 32 locomotives without their tenders attached or 16 with tenders attached. Um, and where are we? So, so these are the pits that, that used to be underneath each locomotive that allowed them to maintain it. And I mean, it's just spectacular. The quality of I mean, the, the condition of the, the foundations. So for, for just as a general rule, uh, so you can sort of see, uh, just put that in my pockets. Um, so rail level was up to about, about, about here. So you can see kind of the foundations. So they excavated, a lot of the brick, I think, was, it sounds like it was moved, uh, taken for the princely sum of 800 pounds and put somewhere else as part of another construction. But it's absolutely, it really is interesting to see. Um, so, well, there's all sorts to talk about, there's huge amounts. So this is for the London and Birmingham Railway. It was built in 1836 and started uh, being used in, in 37 in advance of the station coming through, actually. So it was being used before that, I think. Uh, I'm the amateur historian here, so uh, best to pay attention to other people like Tim, who've been paying, who are far more versed in, well versed in this stuff. Um, actually, the new station will sort of skirt past so this area will be underneath or next to public realm. In fact, I recorded a little bit of video uh, with the, the archaeologist who's in charge of all this and he describes sort of what's going to happen um, with this, which is quite interesting. So one last quick look at uh, the roundhouse. Uh, you can see the annoying foundation piled in by the 1960s or 50s building, I think they went in on top of it. Um, just wonderful, absolutely wonderful bit of railway archaeology. So while I'm here in this incredible site, I'll just talk a bit about the archaeology that's going on. Um, I've said it before, and I've just checked to make sure my facts are straight uh, with the archaeologist, but HS2 is, is the largest archaeological site uh, in Britain's history and actually in the world right now, right the way down from Euston uh, northwards to here. Actually, if you go on Google Maps, you can see some of the trenches excavated along the, the route of HS2. Um, so those are to make sure, in areas that they know are a bit archaeologically interesting, uh, historically interesting, they're to make sure that they don't miss anything when they come, when the main civil contractor comes through and starts uh, moving, moving the world, moving the earth, as it were, to, to, to build the railway. As you might have noticed, it's not just the roundhouse, it's also the, uh, the station buildings behind it, uh, and some of the freight stuff. So those little things are turntables. Look at them, they're little wagon turntables. Marvellous. Yeah, I'm still walking. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little interjection looking at the, the roundhouse. Uh, did some nice live stuff with Tim there, I think. Uh, still going. So I've been, what, how long? I've been walking for, okay, I did a bit of chatting at the start. Well, I've been walking now for about three minutes along the length of the station. Okay, I'm not running, but this gives you an idea of the scale that we're talking about. And in fact, behind me now, very soon, actually, uh, is, chop the top of my head up there, um, is the original, what was known as the Curzon Street, but actually Birmingham Station principal building. Now, right, muted again, too much wind noise. Anyway, we're about to go in here, uh, as I think I might mention. So I'm here with, what's this behind me? Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's right, it's the old, um, actually it wasn't the ticket office, it was incorporated into, it was sort of offices and incorporated into the original station of London, Birmingham. In case I hadn't mentioned it, the London Birmingham is what is now the West Coast Main Line out of Euston, from London up through the lovely Middle English countryside. Um, HS2 pretty much parallels this route, uh, and into Birmingham. There we go, lovely Birmingham. Uh, so we wandered into this building. Uh, first thing you notice is a plaque from the IMEC E going, this is nice. And then the horror of a weird Victorian tradition, which was burying a live cat underneath buildings. 
weird superstitious Victorians. Anyway, so they found one when they were doing renovation work. Um, and here's inside the great staircase. Looking up, uh, my terrible camera work. Uh, there we are, there's the glass sort of dome at the top, which uh, the woodwork was replaced I think in the late 70s, or maybe even more recently than that actually. Um, there are, stairwell, uh, and some of the later additions that were kind of added in, goodness knows when to be honest. Uh, there's a view out to the Woodman pub, and I think we're looking about to look across to, yeah we are, kind of halfway up the stairs. There's a bunch of people in oranges looking around excitedly. And there's that, there's that skylight once more, oh there it is. Uh, yeah, so this place got bombed pretty heavily during the Second World War. In fact, a couple of major incendiaries hit it. So there's a lot of st iron work that was added to stop the thing falling to bits after that. I think there's a lot, a lot of fire damage on one side as well. Um, the balustrade up the stairs is also a bit low. There's the roof, or rather kind of a restored version of it. Um, having been damaged so much uh, during the Second World War, a lot of it had to be replaced, I think. Quite a lot of fire damage. Oh, there's a view out to where we were earlier on the site. And this is the view inside. So lots of these nasty asbestos storage heaters. Uh, there's us having a little plod around. Oh, here's some w some stuff in a bind WH Smith binder from the 80s, probably. Um, not that old. Hello, oh, that's Tim behind me. I'm, I'm here inside, actually inside Curzon, this Curzon Street building, which wasn't really part of the station. Well, it was a part of the station, but anyway, uh, it was some offices. It's the very grand. The principal building. The principal building, yes. Um, and, and I've just spotted a nice view, which I'm going to look at here. Uh, Tim is observing. That's white. Look at it. It's white. It's not going to be perfect. Right, that way is where the end of the new station will be. You can see, uh, oh God, if I click there, sort of, there we are. You can see where the new station will end up still miles the other way towards the centre of Birmingham. Alright, ah, this is what the floor looks like, or rather you can see right through, and someone's about to switch the light on. Uh, oh, that's nice. Uh, this is the boardroom. Uh, it's huge, it's quite a nice big space. A uh, bit of a mess. Oh, and then we dive downstairs as well. There's a big plotter. Uh, copying to be done by... Oh, anyway, yeah. There's a weird basement underneath as well. Oh, and some nice council signage, uh, presumably from the early 80s actually. And, uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's time to go. So uh, so that was the view inside. I hope that was kind of interesting, a bit random. Behind me here is a, is a road. Uh, and the other side of me is the Woodman Pub. With the Woodman Pub and a crew of people in oranges. And a thing that people don't realise, and a lot of people who uh, complain and go, Oh, it's so far from New Street. Um, Curzon Street Station will not stop here. If I spin round. It will not stop here. It'll go over this road and keep going all the way up to Moore Street. Like it goes right the way up to Moore Street, which is what, a five minute walk, if that, four minutes uh, from, from New Street Station uh, on a bit of public realm that'll get improved anyway. Um, this station is huge. People do not realize the scale of this station. Um, and it stretches right the way from this side. So down from the roundhouse where we were a minute ago, right the way up to the other end. Anyway, it's very exciting. So yeah, that was the principal building. Um, that's gonna get incorporated into the overall station. Uh, and it'll be sort of a bit of a visitor centre and there'll be some heritage stuff up top. Oh gosh, it's me wittering and meandering. Oh, the wind noise was terrible. I'm really sorry. But you know, professional as ever. Uh, we can sort that out in the edit, can't we? So now, you see this nice public rail behind me that's actually really quite smart. I quite like it. And on the other side, you can see trains crossing on the way into New Street Station. So the plan is for the works, those archaeological works, to finish in about summer 2020. I'm swapping arms because of lactic acid, because I'm actually carrying a really heavy bag. I've <coughs> been doing some work. Uh, five minutes in. So, people, a lot of people think the station stops there, but actually it continues along here I'm walking. <laughs> So eventually, Curzon Street should, my hope actually, is that Birmingham New Street will take over, sorry, be taken over by Curzon Street as the long distance station. Uh, Birmingham New Street will become a suburban station. Uh, that's my proposal, it's not anyone sensible yet, but the reality is that's what we should be doing. Because the station can't expand, and that's a real constraint on the capacity given that the cross city line um, has a tremendous growth, 200, yeah, two, nearly 250% growth. Absolutely remarkable. People often think of Manchester, as being the main area of rail growth. Yes, huge growth there, but in terms of the raw figures, it's the West Midlands where the, that growth is really spectacular. Here we are, it's getting a bit busier now. And am I at the end of the, uh, have I reached my destination? Absolutely, I have not, no. We're still walking. Um, 
And the reason I'm doing this video is to give you an appreciation of the scale of these new stations. Now, it's not just at Curzon Street where there's a brand new station being built. There's another one at East Midlands Hub in Toton or Totten. Can people tell me whether it's Totten or Toton, please, uh, in the comments? Thank you. Um, Euston's getting a massive upgrade. There'll be a new station at Old Oak Common, which will interchange with the Great Western Main Line and Crossrail. I'm just going to show you this because I quite like this. There's some artwork that's been done about, about High Speed Rail and hoardings here. A lot of people say, well, why, can't, why isn't the station central in, in Nottingham or central in Derby? Well, firstly, because if you put it in either Nottingham or Derby, there's not, you can't put two stations there. It's a high-speed network, not a local, not a regional service. So there's only one station to go around for the East Midlands. And if you put it in one, not the other, that disadvantages one road. Putting them in between uh, is good because you can just expand the, the suburban connectivity there, the urban connectivity, tram, heavy rail. The other thing is, can anyone find me a 400 metre by 50 metre space to fit a new station? Nope, didn't think so. And actually where I am now, finally, at last, uh, next to loads of useful bus stops and where the tram will eventually go. Uh, actually, there's a tram on New Canal Street. Google that. This is where the station does actually end. It doesn't end next to the current Curzon Street principal building. It ends up at Moore Street, right next to the bull ring. So, after nearly, what's that, 10 minutes of uh, walking, we are now near at Moore Street. <laughs> it's a long, a long slog. It won't be that long in the station, of course. I believe there might be travelators. There will be uh, all sorts of different useful connections to allow you to get across the station far quicker than me meandering between traffic crossings and people trying to get about their daily business. But uh, from one modern railway station uh, that doesn't yet exist to a rather lovely former Great Western Railway Station here at the delicious Birmingham Moore Street Station, which is wonderful. That's where I'm going to end this video. I go in here, and I'm going to do a spin and say, welcome to Moore Street Station. Thanks for watching this video about the new Curzon Street Station uh, that doesn't exist yet. Here's one that has existed for a long time. Um, Thanks for watching. This is Chaos. As ever, what do you expect from me? Uh, thanks for watching. Cheerio. Bye.